substance, touch, texture, smell, tactility, getting the feel of objects and processes. It's difficult to imagine the art school without this materiality, and yet we've been operating with no physical spaces for months. What does it mean to be a de-situated art school, an institution with extremely limited or no access to physical spaces? So how do we attempt to teach subjects that appear to require embodiment online? Things like performance, textiles, fashion, fine art, design. What about lab work and field work? And also, what about the richness of gesture and expression and a sense of the presence of others? Should we attempt to replicate all these aspects of education online? Physical architecture and co-presence is tightly woven into our overall conception of education. And so in 2020, we hear that universities are shut, even while the work continues online. It's our inability to imagine the art school or university beyond the material which has created complex social, political and economic issues. And it's not as if we don't know how to teach with very limited access to physical spaces. There are plenty of examples of online courses in material subjects. This is the Open University. But let's not make this a fight between the physical and the digital. One doesn't have to steal from the other. And properly designed, they can be mutually supportive. Ultimately, the location of our teaching, whether it's physical or digital, is less important than the form of the teaching, finding the best mode to engage our students to support them to learn, to question and collaborate at any given point. And it was an emergency. When lockdown started, everything moved online so abruptly, we had no time to rethink. The best we could do was attempt to provide any kind of continuity in a system that can't afford to stop. The result was often a form of practice mirroring in which we took our face-to-face -face modes of teaching and attempted to copy and paste them online. This was often driven by the idea of maintaining contact hours, the simple and understandable desire to perpetuate the timetable by swapping out most of the teaching we did in our buildings with things like Zoom, Skype and Teams. But as we've found, an hour of teaching online doesn't feel the same as an hour of teaching in physical spaces. Instead of contact hours, it's more helpful to think in terms of presence, an idea which works across physical and digital spaces. When we work and teach in our buildings, presence is inherent. Buildings, cities, our physical spaces, they are presence machines. When we move online, we lose much of this. Or perhaps it's better to say that we need to actively design it back in. And presence can come in many forms. It doesn't only have to revolve around live or synchronous moments. As Dave Cormier points out, everything we provide can be thought of in terms of presence. The video or audio recording we make, a timely response to an email, the resources we create and write, and the curation we provide to other sources. We need to expand our thinking about presence beyond physical paradigms. Being embodied, sitting in the physical room, is a powerful but false proxy for engagement. And if we only use the digital environment to mirror face-to-face -face practices, it's always going to feel hollow. I worry that our overall desire to get back to our buildings goes beyond our requirements for materiality and presence and is fueled more by an attachment to a cultural image of education we need to let go of. Opening up our buildings again is important. I miss the materiality and social presence of those spaces. But let's not imagine that getting back into our buildings is returning us to an ideal state. What if we design an art school in which face-to-face -face teaching is designed into an online approach and not the other way around? In this sense, it would be desituated but not disembodied. 
Are we prepared to ask ourselves what we could become if we take this opportunity to reimagine rather than replicate our institutions online?